Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. So let's continue our discussion on India-Japan relations. So in this session, we'll be discussing about the modern relations between India and Japan. So at the International Military Tribunal for the Far East, Indian Justice Radha Binod Pal became famous for his dissenting judgment in favor of Japan. The judgment of Justice Radha Binod Pal, name Radha Binod Pal, is remembered even today in Japan. So Radha Binod Pal, he was an Indian jurist who was a member of the United Nations International Law Commission from 1952 to 1966 and he was one of the three ancient judges appointed to international military tribunal for the far east the tokyo trials of japanese war crimes so this radha binod pal he is remembered even today in japan and this become a symbol of a close ties between india and japan so a relatively well known result of the two nations was in 1949 when India sent the Tokyo Zoo two elephants to cheer the spirits of defeated Japanese empire. So the Tokyo Zoo named Ino Zoo which is of 14.3 hectares that is about 35 acre zoo. It is managed by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government and located in Taito, Tokyo, Japan. So it is Japan's oldest zoo. Yuno Zoo or Ino Zoo. It is the Japan's oldest zoo op uh, which opens on March 20, 1882 and it is a five minute walk from the park exit of Yuno Station with convenient access from Tokyo's public transportation. So India refused to attend the San Francisco Peace Conference. So uh, the San Francisco Peace Conference in the year 1951. So the Treaty of San Francisco also called the Treaty of Peace with Japan. It re-established by peaceful relations between Japan and allied powers on behalf of the United Nations by ending the legal state of war and providing for redress for hostile actions up to and including World War II. So uh, when India refused to attend this conference due to its concern over limitations imposed upon Japanese sovereignty and national independence, so after the restore, restoration of Japan's sovereignty, Japan and India it signed a peace treaty. It signed a peace treaty uh, establishing official diplomatic relations on 28th April 1952. So in which India waived all reparation claims against Japan. And this treaty was one of the first treaties Japan signed after World War II. Diplomatic trade, diplomatic trade, economic and technical relations between India and Japan were well established and India's iron ore helped Japan's recovery from World War II devastation and following Japanese Prime Minister named Nobusuke Kishi's visit to India in the year 1957 and Japan started providing 10 years loans to India in 1958 as the first end loan aid extended by Japanese government. So in India there was a great admiration for Japan's post-war economic reconstruction and subsequent rapid growth and the relation between the two nations were constant. However by Cold War politics uh, Japan as a result of World War II reconstruction was a US ally whereas India pursued a non-aligned foreign policy. India pursued a non-aligned foreign policy, often learning towards the Soviet Union. Since the 1980s, however, efforts were made to strengthen bilateral ties and India's look is policy 
posited Japan as a key partner. Since 1986, Japan has become the India's largest aid donor and remains so. So the relations between the two nations it reached a brief low in the year 1998 as a result of Pokhran to an Indian nuclear weapons test that year Japan imposed sanctions on India following the test which included the suspension of all political exchanges and cutting off economic assistance so these sanctions were lifted 3 years later and relations improved exponentially following this period as bilateral ties between the two nations improved once again to the point where the Japanese prime minister Shinzo Abe was to be the chief guest at India's 2014 Republic Day parade and in uh, 2014 the Indian prime minister Narendra Modi visited Japan and during his tenure as the chief minister of Gujarat Modi had uh, maintained good ties with Japanese prime minister Shinzo Abe and his 2014 visit it further strengthened the ties between the two countries and it resulted in several key agreements including the establishment of a special strategic global partnership and modi visited japan for the second time as a prime minister in november 2016 and during the meeting india and japan signed the agreement for cooperation in peaceful uses of nuclear energy a landmark civil nuclear agreement under which japan will supply nuclear reactors fuel and technology to india and india is not a signatory to non proliferation treaty and it is the only non signatory to receive an exemption from japan so the two sides also signed agreements on manufacturing skill development and manufacturing skill development in india cooperation in space earth sciences agriculture forestry fisheries transport and urban development So Yogendra Puranik popularly known as Yogi became the first elected India born city councilor in Japan to represent the city council of Edogawa city in Tokyo his victory was well received by mass public and media not just in India and Japan but across the globe including China talking about the economic relations between India and uh, Japan in August 2000 the japanese prime minister visited india at this meeting japan and india agreed to establish japan india global partnership japan india global partnership in the 21st century so indian prime minister watch by visited japan in december 2001 where both prime ministers issued Japan India joint declaration in April 2005 Japanese prime minister Koizumi he visited India and signed a joint statement Japan India partnership in new asian era strategic orientation of Japan India global partnership so Japan is the third largest investor in the indian economy with cumulative foreign direct investment inflows of uh, 30.27 billion dollars during 2000 to 2019 contributing 7.2% to india's total foreign direct investment inflows during the same period so the imports to india from japan it stood at 12.77 billion dollars in 2018 19 making it india's 14th largest import partner In October 2008 Japan signed an agreement with India under which it would provide the later a low interest loan at which Japan would provide India a low interest loan which is worth of 4.5 billion dollars to construct a railway project between Delhi and Mumbai So this is the single largest overseas project being financed by Japan and reflected growing economic partnership between the nations and India is also one of the only three countries in the world with whom Japan has a security pact. So as of March 
2006 जापान वाज द थर्ड लार्जेस्ट इन्वेस्टर इन इंडिया जापान वाज द थर्ड लार्जेस्ट इन्वेस्टर इन इंडिया सो केनेची योशिडा अ डायरेक्टर ऑफ सॉफ्ट ब्रिज सॉल्यूशंस जापान stated in late 2009 that indian engineers were becoming the backbone of japan's it industry and that it is important for japanese industry to work together with india and under the memorandum any japanese coming to india for business or work will be straight away gra- granted a 3 year visa and similar procedures will be followed by japan and other highlights of the visit includes abolition of abolition of custom duties abolition of custom duties on a 94% of uh, trade between the two nations over the next decade as per the agreements tariffs will be removed on almost 90% of japan's export to india and 97% of india's export to japan trade between the two nations has also steadily been growing india and japan it signed an agreement in december 2015 to build a bullet train between mumbai and ahmedabad using japan's shinkansen technology with a loan from japan of 12 billion euros and more than 4 fifths of the project with 19 billion dollars which cost will be funded by 0.1 interest rate loan from japan as part of a deepening economic relationship so talking about the military ties between india and japan india and uh, japan they have a close military ties and they have shared interest in maintaining the security sea lanes security sea lanes in the asia pacific and indian oceans and in incorporating for fighting international crime terrorism piracy and proliferation of weapons of mass destruction so the two nations have frequently held joint military exercise and cooperate on technology india and japan concluded a security pact on 22nd october 2008 and japanese prime minister shinzo abe is seen by some to be an idophile and with rising tensions in territorial disputes with japan's neighbor has advocated closer security cooperation with india so in july 2014 the indian navy participated in exercise called malabar exercise with the japanese and the us navies reflecting shared perspective on indo pacific maritime security and india is also negotiating to purchase us2 amphibious aircraft for indian navy so talking about the cultural ties japan and india they have a strong cultural ties based mainly on japanese buddhism which remains widely practiced through japan even today the two nation announced 2007 the 50th anniversary of indo japan cultural agreement as the indo japan friendship and tourism promotion year holding cultural events in both the countries so one such cultural event is the annual namaste india festival which started in japan over 20 years ago and is now the largest festival of its kind in the world so at 2016 festival representatives from onagawa town performed as a sign of appreciation for the support the town received from the indian government during the great east japan earthquake so the indian ndrf the national disaster response force team it had been dispatched in onagawa for its first overseas mission and conducted search and rescue operations for missing people so ozamu tezuka wrote a biographical manga called buddha from 1972 to 1983 and on 
10th April 2006, a Japanese delegation proposed to raise funds and provide other support for rebuilding the world-famous ancient Nalanda University and ancient Buddhist center of learning in Bihar into a major international institution of education. Tamil movies are very popular in Japan and Rajnikant is the most popular Indian star in this country. Bollywood has become more popular among the Japanese people in recent decades. And the Indian yogi and the pacifist Dalsam is one of the most popular characters in the Japanese video game street game series called Street Fighter. So, uh, the Street Fighter, it is commonly abbreviated as SF. It is a Japanese fighting video game franchise, which is developed and um, published by Capcom. So, starting uh, 3rd July 2014, Japan has been issuing multiple entry visas for the short-term stay of Indian nationals. So, talking about one of the famous gods called Goddesses Lakshmi. This Goddesses Lakshmi, it is also worshipped in japan as kichi joten so this is worshipped as a goddesses of fortune prosperity and beauty depicted with the gold coins in her hand and either sitting or standing on a lotus flower so in so this in india so whereas in japan they worship this goddesses of fortune prosperity and beauty depicted with knowing which gem uh, it is a particular type of gem which the Japanese people use, which is a costliest and very precious uh, gem. So that is placed in the goddess's hand and standing on a lotus flower. The similarities are same, but Indian gods hold a gold coins, whereas the Japan goddesses have a gem in her hand. So this is about the cultural ties between India and Japan. So talking about the 2016 nuclear deal. In November 2016, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on a three-day visit to Japan, he signed a deal with the counterpart Shinzo Abe on nuclear energy. So the deal, it took six years to negotiate delayed in part by the 2011 fukushima nuclear disaster so this is the first time that japan signed such deal with the non-signatory of non-proliferation treaty so the deal gives japan the right to supply nuclear reactors fuel and technology to india so this deal aimed to help india build the six nuclear reactors in southern india increasing nuclear energy capacity tenfold by 2032 so this is all about india and japan relations so see you in the next session and in the next session let's discuss about india israel relations thank you